Algebraic Geometry, Wikipedia Article Audio Algebraic geometry is a branch of mathematics, classically studying zeros of multivariate polynomials. Modern algebraic geometry is based on the use of abstract algebraic techniques, mainly from commutative algebra, for solving geometrical problems about these sets of zeros. The fundamental objects of study in algebraic geometry are algebraic varieties, which are geometric manifestations of solutions of systems of polynomial equations. Examples of the most studied classes of algebraic varieties are, plane algebraic curves, which include lines, circles, parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas, cubic curves like elliptic curves, and quartic curves like lemniscates and Cassini ovals. A point of the plane belongs to an algebraic curve if its coordinates satisfy a given polynomial equation. Basic questions involve the study of the points of special interest like the singular points, the inflection points and the points at infinity. More advanced questions involve the topology of the curve and relations between the curves given by different equations. Basic Notions Zeros of Simultaneous Polynomials Algebraic geometry occupies a central place in modern mathematics and has multiple conceptual connections with such diverse fields as complex analysis, topology, and number theory. Initially a study of systems of polynomial equations and several variables, the subject of algebraic geometry starts where equation solving leaves off, and it becomes even more important to understand the intrinsic properties of the totality of solutions of a system of equations, than to find a specific solution, this leads into some of the deepest areas in all of mathematics, both conceptually and in terms of technique. In the 20th century, algebraic geometry split into several sub-areas. Much of the development of the mainstream of algebraic geometry in the 20th century occurred within an abstract algebraic framework, with increasing emphasis being placed on intrinsic properties of algebraic varieties not dependent on any particular way of embedding the variety in an ambient coordinate space. This parallels developments in topology, differential and complex geometry. One key achievement of this abstract algebraic geometry is Grothendieck's scheme theory which allows one to use sheaf theory to study algebraic varieties in a way which is very similar to its use in the study of differential and analytic manifolds. This is obtained by extending the notion of point, in classical algebraic geometry, a point of an affine variety may be identified, through Hilbert's null Stellen sets, with the maximal ideal of the coordinate ring, while the points of the corresponding affine scheme are all prime ideals of this ring. This means that a point of such a scheme may be either a usual point or a sub-variety. This approach also enables a unification of the language and the tools of classical algebraic geometry mainly concerned with complex points, and of algebraic number theory. Wiles's proof of the long-standing conjecture called Fermat's last theorem is an example of the power of this approach. In classical algebraic geometry, the main objects of interest are the vanishing sets of collections of polynomials, meaning the set of all points that simultaneously satisfy one or more polynomial equations. For instance, the two-dimensional sphere of radius 1 in three-dimensional Euclidean space R3 could be defined as the set of all points with a slanted circle in R3 can be defined as the set of all points which satisfy the two polynomial equations. Affine varieties First we start with a field K. In classical algebraic geometry, this field was always the complex number C, but many of the same results are true if we assume only that K is algebraically closed. 
we consider the affine space of dimension n over k, denoted a n. When one fixes a coordinate system, one may identify a n with k n. The purpose of not working with k n is to emphasize that one forgets the vector space structure that k n carries. A function f, a n a1 is said to be polynomial if it can be written as a polynomial, that is, if there is a polynomial p in k such that f equals p for every point m with coordinates in a n. The property of a function to be polynomial does not depend on the choice of a coordinate system in a n. Regular functions When a coordinate system is chosen, the regular functions on the affine n space may be identified with the ring of polynomial functions in n variables over k. Therefore, the set of the regular functions on a n is a ring, which is denoted k. We say that a polynomial vanishes at a point if evaluating it at that point gives zero. Let s be a set of polynomials in k. The vanishing set of S is the set V of all points in AN where every polynomial in S vanishes. Symbolically, a subset of AN which is V, for some S, is called an algebraic set. The V stands for variety. Morphism of affine varieties Given a subset U of AN, can one recover the set of polynomials which generate it? If U is any subset of AN, define I to be the set of all polynomials whose vanishing set contains U. The I stands for ideal, if two polynomials F and G both vanish on U, then F and G vanishes on U, and if H is any polynomial, then HF vanishes on U, so I is always an ideal of the polynomial ring K. Rational function and birational equivalence Two natural questions to ask are Projective variety The answer to the first question is provided by introducing the Zariski topology, a topology on a n whose closed sets are the algebraic sets, and which directly reflects the algebraic structure of k. Then U equals V if and only if U is an algebraic set or equivalently as a risky closed set. The answer to the second question is given by Hilbert's null Stellen sats. In one of its forms, it says that I is the radical of the ideal generated by S. In more abstract language, there is a Galois connection, giving rise to two closure operators, they can be identified and naturally play a basic role in the theory, the example is elaborated at Galois connection. For various reasons we may not always want to work with the entire ideal corresponding to an algebraic set U. Hilbert's basis theorem implies that ideals in K are always finitely generated. Real algebraic geometry an algebraic set is called irreducible if it cannot be written as the union of two smaller algebraic sets. Any algebraic set is a finite union of irreducible algebraic sets and this decomposition is unique. Thus its elements are called the irreducible components of the algebraic set. An irreducible algebraic set is also called a variety. It turns out that an algebraic set is a variety if and only if it may be defined as the vanishing set of a prime ideal of the polynomial ring. Some authors do not make a clear distinction between algebraic sets and varieties and use irreducible variety to make the distinction when needed. Just as continuous functions are the natural maps on topological spaces and smooth functions are the natural maps on differentiable manifolds, there is a natural class of functions on an algebraic set, called regular functions or polynomial functions. A regular function on an algebraic set V contained in A n is the restriction to V of a regular function on A n. For an algebraic set defined on the field of the complex numbers, 
the regular functions are smooth and even analytic. It may seem unnaturally restrictive to require that a regular function always extend to the ambient space, but it is very similar to the situation in a normal topological space, where the Tietze extension theorem guarantees that a continuous function on a closed subset always extends to the ambient topological space. Just as with the regular functions on a fine space, the regular functions on V form a ring, which we denote by K. This ring is called the coordinate ring of V. Computational Algebraic Geometry Since regular functions on V come from regular functions on A n, there is a relationship between the coordinate rings. Specifically, if a regular function on V is the restriction of two functions f and g in K, then fg is a polynomial function which is null on V and thus belongs to I. Thus K may be identified with K slash I. Grobner basis Using regular functions from an affine variety to A1, we can define regular maps from one affine variety to another. First we will define a regular map from a variety into a fine space, let V be a variety contained in A n. Choose M regular functions on V, and call them F1, F m. We define a regular map F from V to A m by letting F equals. In other words, each F i determines one coordinate of the range of F. The mainstream of algebraic geometry is devoted to the study of the complex points of the algebraic varieties and more generally to the points with coordinates in an algebraically closed field, the study of the points of an algebraic variety with coordinates in the field of the rational numbers or in a number field became arithmetic geometry, a subfield of algebraic number theory. The study of the real points of an algebraic variety is the subject of real algebraic geometry, a large part of. Singularity theory is devoted to the singularities of algebraic varieties, with the rise of the computers, a computational algebraic geometry area has emerged, which lies at the intersection of algebraic geometry and computer algebra. It consists essentially in developing algorithms and software for studying and finding the properties of explicitly given algebraic varieties. If V is a variety contained in A m, we say that F is a regular map from V to V if the range of F is contained in V. The definition of the regular maps apply also to algebraic sets. The regular maps are also called morphisms as they make the collection of all affine algebraic sets into a category, where the objects are the affine algebraic sets and the morphisms are the regular maps. The affine varieties is a subcategory of the category of the algebraic sets. Given a subset U of A n, when is U equals V, given a set S of polynomials, when is S equals I. Given a regular map G from V to V and a regular function F of K, then F G K. The map F F G is a ring homomorphism from K to K. Conversely, every ring homomorphism from K to K defines a regular map from V to V. This defines an equivalence of categories between the category of algebraic sets and the opposite category of the finitely generated reduced K algebras. This equivalence is one of the starting points of scheme theory. Cylindrical algebraic decomposition Asymptotic complexity versus practical efficiency Abstract modern viewpoint History in contrast to the preceding sections, this section concerns only varieties and not algebraic sets. On the other hand, the definitions extend naturally to projective varieties, as an affine variety and its projective completion have the same field of functions. 
Dennis S. Arnon showed that George E. Collins' S. cylindrical algebraic decomposition allows the computation of the topology of semi-algebraic sets. Bruno Buckberger presented the Grobner bases and his algorithm to compute them. Daniel Lazard presented a new algorithm for solving systems of homogeneous polynomial equations with a computational complexity which is essentially polynomial in the expected number of solutions and thus simply exponential in the number of the unknowns. This algorithm is strongly related with Macaulay's multivariate resultant. If V is an affine variety, its coordinate ring is an integral domain and has thus a field of fractions which is denoted K and called the field of the rational functions on V or, shortly, the function field of V. Its elements are the restrictions to V of the rational functions over the affine space containing V. The domain of a rational function F is not V but the complement of the subvariety where the denominator of F vanishes. As with regular maps, one may define a rational map from a variety V to a variety V. As with the regular maps, the rational maps from V to V may be identified to the field homomorphisms from K to K. Two affine varieties are birationally equivalent if there are two rational functions between them which are inverse one to the other in the regions where both are defined. Equivalently, they are birationally equivalent if their function fields are isomorphic. V is empty, if and only if the Grobner basis for any monomial ordering is reduced to, by means of the Hilbert series one may compute the dimension and the degree of V from any Grobner basis of I for a monomial ordering refining the total degree, if the dimension of V is zero, one may compute the points of V from any Grobner basis of I. A Grobner basis computation allows one to remove from V all irreducible components which are contained in a given hypersurface. A Grobner basis computation allows one to compute the Zariski closure of the image of V by the projection on the K first coordinates, and the subset of the image where the projection is not proper. More generally Grobner basis computations allow one to compute the Zariski closure of the image and the critical points of a rational function of V into another affine variety. An affine variety is a rational variety if it is birationally equivalent to an affine space. This means that the variety admits a rational parameterization. For example, the circle of equation, x, 2, plus, y, 2, 1, equals, 0, plus y1 equals 0, is a rational curve, as it has the parameterization, which may also be viewed as a rational map from the line to the circle. The problem of resolution of singularities is to know if every algebraic variety is birationally equivalent to a variety whose projective completion is non-singular. It was solved in the affirmative in characteristic zero by Hisuk Hironaka in 1964 and is yet unsolved in finite characteristic. Before the 16th century just as the formulas for the roots of second, third, and fourth degree polynomials suggest extending real numbers to the more algebraically complete setting of the complex numbers, many properties of algebraic varieties suggest extending a fine space to a more geometrically complete projective space. Whereas the complex numbers are obtained by adding the number i, a root of the polynomial x2 plus 1, Projective space is obtained by adding inappropriate points at infinity, points where parallel lines may meet. To see how this might come about, consider the variety V. If we draw it, we get a parabola. As x goes to positive infinity, the slope of the line from the origin to the point also goes to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, the slope of the same line goes to negative infinity. Compare this to the variety V. This is a cubic curve. 
As x goes to positive infinity, the slope of the line from the origin to the point goes to positive infinity just as before. But unlike before, as x goes to negative infinity, the slope of the same line goes to positive infinity as well, the exact opposite of the parabola. So the behavior at infinity of v is different from the behavior at infinity of v. Renaissance 19th and early 20th century 20th century The consideration of the projective completion of the two curves, which is their prolongation at infinity in the projective plane, allows us to quantify this difference, the point at infinity of the parabola is a regular point, whose tangent is the line at infinity, while the point at infinity of the cubic curve is a cusp. Also, both curves are rational, as they are parameterized by x, and the Riemann Rock theorem implies that the cubic curve must have a singularity, which must be at infinity, as all its points in the affine space are regular. Thus, many of the properties of algebraic varieties, including birational equivalence and all the topological properties, depend on the behavior at infinity and so it is natural to study the varieties in projective space. Furthermore, the introduction of projective techniques made many theorems in algebraic geometry simpler and sharper, for example, Bazout's theorem on the number of intersection points between two varieties can be stated in its sharpest form only in projective space. For these reasons, Projective space plays a fundamental role in algebraic geometry. Nowadays, the projective space Pn of dimension n is usually defined as the set of the lines passing through a point, considered as the origin, in the affine space of dimension n plus 1, or equivalently to the set of the vector lines in a vector space of dimension n plus 1. When a coordinate system has been chosen in the space of dimension n plus 1, all the points of a line have the same set of coordinates, up to the multiplication by an element of k. This defines the homogeneous coordinates of a point of Pn as a sequence of n plus 1 elements of the base field k, defined up to the multiplication by a nonzero element of k. A polynomial in n plus 1 variables vanishes at all points of a line passing through the origin if and only if it is homogeneous. In this case, one says that the polynomial vanishes at the corresponding point of Pn. This allows us to define a projective algebraic set in Pn as the set V, where a finite set of homogeneous polynomials vanishes. Like for affine algebraic sets, there is a bijection between the projective algebraic sets and the reduced homogeneous ideals which define them. The projective varieties are the projective algebraic sets whose defining ideal is prime. In other words, a projective variety is a projective algebraic set, whose homogeneous coordinate ring is an integral domain the projective coordinates ring being defined as the quotient of the graded ring or the polynomials in n plus 1 variables by the homogeneous ideal defining the variety. Every projective algebraic set may be uniquely decomposed into a finite union of projective varieties. The only regular functions which may be defined properly on a projective variety are the constant functions. Thus this notion is not used in projective situations. On the other hand, the field of the rational functions or function field is a useful notion, which, similarly to the affine case, is defined as the set of the quotients of two homogeneous elements of the same degree in the homogeneous coordinate ring. Analytic Geometry Real algebraic geometry is the study of the real points of algebraic geometry. The fact that the field of the real numbers is an ordered field cannot be ignored in such a study. For example, the curve of equation, x, 2, plus, 
y 2 a equals 0 plus y a equals 0 is a circle if a 0 but does not have any real point if a 0 or by x y 1 equals 0 and x plus y 0. One of the challenging problems of real algebraic geometry is the unsolved Hilbert's 16th problem, decide which respective positions are possible for the ovals of a non-singular plane curve of degree 8. One may date the origin of computational algebraic geometry to meeting Eurasam 79 held at Marseille, France in June 1979. At this meeting. Since then, most results in this area are related to one or several of these items either by using or improving one of these algorithms, or by finding algorithms whose complexity is simply exponential in the number of the variables. A body of mathematical theory complementary to symbolic methods called numerical algebraic geometry has been developed over the last several decades. The main computational method is homotopy continuation. This supports, for example, a model of floating point computation for solving problems of algebraic geometry. A Grobner basis is a system of generators of a polynomial ideal whose computation allows the deduction of many properties of the affine algebraic variety defined by the ideal. Given an ideal I defining an algebraic set V. Grobner basis computations do not allow one to compute directly the primary decomposition of I nor the prime ideals defining the irreducible components of V, but most algorithms for this involve Grobner basis computation. The algorithms which are not based on Grobner bases use regular chains but may need Grobner bases in some exceptional situations. Grobner bases are deemed to be difficult to compute. In fact they may contain, in the worst case, polynomials whose degree is doubly exponential in the number of variables and a number of polynomials which is also doubly exponential. However, this is only a worst-case complexity, and the complexity bound of Lazard's algorithm of 1979 may frequently apply. Foggery F5 algorithm realizes this complexity, as it may be viewed as an improvement of Lazard's 1979 algorithm. It follows that the best implementations allow one to compute almost routinely with algebraic sets of degree more than 100. This means that, presently, the difficulty of computing a Grobner basis is strongly related to the intrinsic difficulty of the problem. Applications CAD is an algorithm which was introduced in 1973 by G. Collins to implement with an acceptable complexity the tarski seidenberg theorem on quantifier elimination over the real numbers. This theorem concerns the formulas of the first-order logic whose atomic formulas are polynomial equalities or inequalities between polynomials with real coefficients. These formulas are thus the formulas which may be constructed from the atomic formulas by the logical operators and, or, not, for all and exists. Tarski's theorem asserts that, from such a formula, one may compute an equivalent formula without quantifier. Notes The complexity of CAD is doubly exponential in the number of variables. This means that CAD allows, in theory, to solve every problem of real algebraic geometry which may be expressed by such a formula, that is almost every problem concerning explicitly given varieties and semi-algebraic sets. While Grobner basis computation has doubly exponential complexity only in rare cases, CAD has almost always this high complexity. This implies that, unless if most polynomials appearing in the input are linear, 
it may not solve problems with more than four variables. Since 1973, most of the research on this subject is devoted either to improve CAD or to find alternate algorithms in special cases of general interest. As an example of the state of art, there are efficient algorithms to find at least a point in every connected component of a semi-algebraic set, and thus to test if a semi-algebraic set is empty. On the other hand, CAD is yet, in practice, the best algorithm to count the number of connected components. The basic general algorithms of computational geometry have a double exponential worst case complexity. More precisely, if d is the maximal degree of the input polynomials and n the number of variables, their complexity is at most d, 2, c, n, for some constant c, and, for some inputs, the complexity is at least d, 2, c, n, for another constant c. During the last 20 years of 20th century, various algorithms have been introduced to solve specific sub-problems with a better complexity. Most of these algorithms have a complexity, d, o, n, 2. Among these algorithms which solve a sub-problem of the problems solved by Grobner bases, one may cite testing if an affine variety is empty and solving non-homogeneous polynomial systems which have a finite number of solutions. Such algorithms are rarely implemented because, on most entries Foggery's F4 and F5 algorithms have a better practical efficiency and probably a similar or better complexity. The main algorithms of real algebraic geometry which solve a problem solved by CAD are related to the topology of semi-algebraic sets. One may cite counting the number of connected components, testing if two points are in the same components or computing a Whitney stratification of a real algebraic set. They have a complexity of d, o, n, 2 but the constant involved by O notation is so high that using them to solve any non-trivial problem effectively solved by CAD, is impossible even if one could use all the existing computing power in the world. Therefore, these algorithms have never been implemented and this is an active research area to search for algorithms with have together a good asymptotic complexity and a good practical efficiency. The modern approaches to algebraic geometry redefine and effectively extend the range of basic objects in various levels of generality to schemes, formal schemes, IND schemes, algebraic spaces, algebraic stacks and so on. The need for this arises already from the useful ideas within theory of varieties e.g. the formal functions of Zariski can be accommodated by introducing nilpotent elements in structure rings, considering spaces of loops and arcs, constructing quotients by group actions and developing formal grounds for natural intersection theory and deformation theory lead to some of the further extensions. Most remarkably, in late 1950s, Algebraic varieties were subsumed into Alexander Grothendieck's concept of a scheme. Their local objects are affine schemes or prime spectra which are locally ringed spaces which form a category which is anti-equivalent to the category of commutative unital rings, extending the duality between the category of affine algebraic varieties over a field K, and the category of finitely generated reduced K algebras. The gluing is along the risky topology, one can glue within the category of locally ringed spaces, but also, using the Yanita embedding, within the more abstract category of press heaves of sets over the category of affine schemes. The Zariski topology in the set theoretic sense is then replaced by a Grothendieck topology. Grothendieck introduced Grothendieck topologies having in mind more exotic but geometrically finer and more sensitive examples than the crude Zariski topology, 
namely the Adel topology, and the two flat Grothendieck topologies, FPPF and FPQC. Nowadays some other examples became prominent including Nisnovic topology. Sheaves can be furthermore generalized to stacks in the sense of Groth and Deek, usually with some additional representability conditions leading to Ardeen stacks and, even finer, deligny mumford stacks, both often called algebraic stacks. Sometimes other algebraic sites replace the category of affine schemes. For example, Nikolai Durov has introduced commutative algebraic monads as a generalization of local objects in a generalized algebraic geometry. Versions of a tropical geometry, of an absolute geometry over a field of one element and an algebraic analog of a Ray Clough's geometry were realized in this setup. Another formal generalization is possible to universal algebraic geometry in which every variety of algebras has its own algebraic geometry. The term variety of algebras should not be confused with algebraic variety. The language of schemes, stacks and generalizations has proved to be a valuable way of dealing with geometric concepts and became cornerstones of modern algebraic geometry. Algebraic stacks can be further generalized and for many practical questions like deformation theory and intersection theory, this is often the most natural approach. One can extend the Groth and Deek site of affine schemes to a higher categorical site of derived affine schemes, by replacing the commutative rings with an infinity category of differential graded commutative algebras or of simplicial commutative rings or a similar category with an appropriate variant of a Groth and Deek topology. One can also replace pressheaves of sets by pressheaves of simplicial sets. Then, in presence of an appropriate homotopic machinery one can develop a notion of derived stack as such a presheaf on the infinity category of derived affine schemes which is satisfying certain infinite categorical version of a sheaf axiom. Quillen model categories, Siegel categories, and quasi-categories are some of the most often used tools to formalize this yielding the derived algebraic geometry, introduced by the school of Carlos Simpson, including André Hershowitz, Bertrand Tone, Gabriel Vetsasi, Michel Vaki, and others and developed further by Jacob Lurie, Bertrand Tone, and Gabriel Vetsasi. Another version of derived algebraic geometry, using A-infinity categories has been developed from early 1990s by Maxim Kontsevich and followers. Some of the roots of algebraic geometry date back to the work of the Hellenistic Greeks from the 5th century BC. The Delian problem, for instance, was to construct a length x so that the cube of side x contained the same volume as the rectangular box a 2 b for given sides a and b. Menach misconsidered the problem geometrically by intersecting the pair of plane conics i equals x2 and xy equals ib. The later work, in the 3rd century BC, of Archimedes and Apollonius studied more systematically problems on conic sections, and also involved the use of coordinates. The Arab mathematicians were able to solve by purely algebraic means certain cubic equations, and then to interpret the results geometrically. This was done, for instance, by Ibn al-Haytham in the 10th century AD. Subsequently, Persian mathematician Omar Khayyam discovered a method for solving cubic equations by intersecting a parabola with a circle. A few years after Omar Khayyam, Sharif al-Din al-Tasi's treatise on equations has been described as inaugurating the beginning of algebraic geometry. Such techniques of applying geometrical constructions to algebraic problems were also adopted by a number of Renaissance mathematicians such as Gerolamo Cardano and Niccolo Fontana Tartaglia on their studies of the cubic equation. 
the geometrical approach to construction problems, rather than the algebraic one, was favored by most 16th and 17th century mathematicians, notably Blaise Pascal who argued against the use of algebraic and analytical methods in geometry. The French mathematicians Franciscus Vieta and later René Descartes and Pierre de Fermat revolutionized the conventional way of thinking about construction problems through the introduction of coordinate geometry. They were interested primarily in the properties of algebraic curves, such as those defined by Diophantin equations, and the algebraic reformulation of the classical Greek works on conics and cubics. During the same period, Blaise Pascal and Gerard Desargues approached geometry from a different perspective, developing the synthetic notions of projective geometry. Pascal and Desargues also studied curves, but from the purely geometrical point of view, the analogue of the Greek ruler and compass construction. Ultimately, the analytic geometry of Descartes and Fermat won out for it supplied the 18th century mathematicians with concrete quantitative tools needed to study physical problems using the new calculus of Newton and Leibniz. However, by the end of the 18th century, most of the algebraic character of coordinate geometry was subsumed by the calculus of infinitesimals of Lagrange and Euler. It took the simultaneous 19th-century developments of non-Euclidean geometry and abelian integrals in order to bring the old algebraic ideas back into the geometrical fold. The first of these new developments was seized up by Edmund Laguerre and Arthur Cayley, who attempted to ascertain the generalized metric properties of projective space. Cayley introduced the idea of homogeneous polynomial forms and more specifically quadratic forms, on projective space. Subsequently, Felix Klein studied projective geometry from the viewpoint that the geometry on a space is encoded in a certain class of transformations on the space. By the end of the 19th century, projective geometers were studying more general kinds of transformations on figures in projective space. Rather than the projective linear transformations which were normally regarded as giving the fundamental Kleinian geometry on projective space, they concerned themselves also with the higher degree birational transformations. This weaker notion of congruence would later lead members of the 20th century Italian school of algebraic geometry to classify algebraic surfaces up to birational isomorphism. The second early 19th century development, that of abelian integrals, would lead Bernhard Riemann to the development of Riemann surfaces. In the same period began the algebraization of the algebraic geometry through commutative algebra. The prominent results in this direction are Hilbert's basis theorem and Hilbert's null Stellensatz which are the basis of the connection between algebraic geometry and commutative algebra, and Macaulay's multivariate resultant, which is the basis of elimination theory. Probably because of the size of the computation which is implied by multivariate resultants, elimination theory was forgotten during the middle of the 20th century until it was renewed by singularity theory and computational algebraic geometry. B. L. van der Werden, Oscar Zariski, and André Vey developed a foundation for algebraic geometry based on contemporary commutative algebra, including valuation theory and the theory of ideals. One of the goals was to give a rigorous framework for proving the results of Italian school of algebraic geometry. In particular, this school used systematically the notion of generic point without any precise definition, which was first given by these authors during the 1930s. In the 1950s and 1960s Jean-Pierre Serra and Alexander Grothendieck recast the foundations making use of sheaf theory. Later, from about 1960, and largely led by Grothendieck, 
the idea of schemes was worked out, in conjunction with a very refined apparatus of homological techniques. After a decade of rapid development the field stabilized in the 1970s, and new applications were made, both to number theory and to more classical geometric questions on algebraic varieties, singularities, and moduli. An important class of varieties, not easily understood directly from their defining equations, are the abelian varieties, which are the projective varieties whose points form an abelian group. The prototypical examples are the elliptic curves, which have a rich theory. They were instrumental in the proof of Fermat's last theorem and are also used in elliptic curve cryptography. In parallel with the abstract trend of the algebraic geometry, which is concerned with general statements about varieties, methods for effective computation with concretely given varieties have also been developed, which lead to the new area of computational algebraic geometry. One of the founding methods of this area is the theory of Grobner bases, introduced by Bruno Buckberger in 1965. Another founding method, more specially devoted to real algebraic geometry, is the cylindrical algebraic decomposition, introduced by George E. Collins in 1973. See also, derived algebraic geometry. An analytic variety is defined locally as the set of common solutions of several equations involving analytic functions. It is analogous to the included concept of real or complex algebraic variety. Any complex manifold is an analytic variety. Since analytic varieties may have singular points, not all analytic varieties are manifolds. Modern analytic geometry is essentially equivalent to real and complex algebraic geometry, as has been shown by Jean-Pierre Serra in his paper Gaga, the name of which is French for algebraic geometry and analytic geometry. Nevertheless, the two fields remain distinct, as the methods of proof are quite different and algebraic geometry includes also geometry in finite characteristic. Algebraic geometry now finds applications in statistics, control theory, robotics, error-correcting codes, phylogenetics and geometric modeling. There are also connections to string theory, game theory, graph matchings, solitons and integer programming. <laughs>